The first thing that we'll need to do is we need to take the red knob, which is the mixture, and push it all the way in. Making sure, of course, the flap switch is up, parking brake is on. Right here, the lights will indicate brake lights are on. Flap light is off, so no flaps are in position. Com switch, that indicates the microphone. This is what you speak through. So you're speaking on COM1. You have two radios in here and two navigational uh, units as well. But COM1 is what you speak through. COM2 is you would use that if you wanted to speak on COM, you know, communications 2. But usually you're on 1 and not 2. Both, that means you can listen to both radios. So you've got one here, you've got one there. And you can actually listen to two frequencies, two different frequencies at the same time. Sometimes very useful if you're monitoring air traffic control for your flight and you wanted to listen to the ATIS, that's the automated terminal information service, letting you know what the active runway is, weather conditions, etc. So you click on both and you tune the second radio to the ATIS frequency, and then you can listen to two frequencies at the same time. NAV1, NAV2, marker DME. Now, by clicking those on, you can actually hear the frequency identifier and we'll talk about those in a later video but for the moment that's what they are they're just means of being able to listen to whatever's being transmitted on the navigational channels over here this is your registration of the aircraft Golf, of course, is for the UK. C would be for Canada. D for Germany. Uh, e is uh, for uh, Spain. N is for America, North America. Now, most other countries will have letters. The United States has a combination of numbers and letters. We've made our registration to be W-I-V-Y. Actually, it could have been Y. <laughs> if there had been more letters, it would have been Y-V. But anyway, we have to use the phonetics. So golf, whiskey, India, Victor, Yankee. That's the registration of the aircraft you're flying at the moment. Underneath, uh, this is what they call the six pack the three essential this the six essential uh, instruments that you will need and we will of course go into more detail on these in another video and let's start the engine first thing turn on the master We do the fuel pump for about five seconds and listen. We do the pitot tube heat on. We'll tell you about those later on. And the next thing we'll do is we'll turn on the beacon to let everybody know that there is something happening with this aeroplane. Next, we'll go over to the avionics and turn those on and you can see it turned on all the radios now back down here we're going to turn the ignition switch from off it goes to the right magneto left magneto to both and then it's spring loaded we just turn it just like you do in the car and it will start the engine.
Very good. Now we're going to be taxiing, so we need the taxi light, turn on the nav, turn on the strobes, everybody can now see us. Make sure that all of these trip switches are all pushed in and you have a, a checklist to follow so you can do that as you uh, as you wish okay now we'll go up here and we're going to adjust this to make sure it is level with the horizon and we use this button here to make the adjustment. Do not do these on any of them because you will change the dial if you do and that's not a good thing. Now I want to show you how these controls work so that you know how they control the aeroplane. A car, of course, is on a road with wheels affixed to the road and turning the steering wheel turns the wheels and then you go around corners and all the rest. With an aeroplane, you have more axes than that. A car has just left and right and can go forwards and backwards. But with an aeroplane, you go left and right, forwards and up and down. So you have different axes. And here's how we control those axes. Now, let's have a look at the surfaces of our little Cessna. First of all, I'm going to start with the pedals. Now the pedals, when you're on the ground, that turns the front nose wheel. So it allows you to control the direction of the aircraft on the ground. In the air, it turns the rudder. So if I push left, there it goes. I push right, there it goes, left and right. Now, the steering wheel in a car will turn you left and right when you're on the ground. When you're on the ground in an aeroplane, the steering wheel isn't going to do anything. In the air, it does make a change. Now if I pull back on the yoke, notice what happens here. These are what we call the elevators. Now with the rudder, if you think of your aeroplane on a pivot point like this, okay, then that would be one axis. If the axis is going through the this way, then obviously the aeroplane moves in that direction. And then finally, let's have a look at the wings. I'm now going to turn the yoke the steering wheel, if you wish. And I want you to see what happens to the tips of the wings when I do. Now I want to show you what the aircraft lights are all about. First of all, I want you to look at the tail. That's called the beacon. And I'm going to turn the beacon on. See, now the beacon is flashing. That lets everybody know that 
you know, the aeroplane is in active mode. There's someone in control. I'll turn that off for the moment. Navigation lights. Those are steady lights on the wingtips. Green on the right, red on the left. The strobe, what happens, see that? It's a flashing light. Very useful when you're flying at night or in poor visibility so that you can be seen. It's the sort of thing that you would probably want to use at an airport when you're taxiing just to make sure that others can see you. Now I'm going to turn the aeroplane around a little bit. Let me show you the close-up of the strobe and the navigation light. There's the navigation light and there's the strobe. Oh, that must be you. Now, the lights. When you're on the ground and you are taxiing to the active runway, you will turn on the taxi lights. That light is actually underneath here and it's not a very bright light, but it's there just to let you see where the runway is. What's important is that when you are taking off or landing, you turn these lights on which are your main lights. There they are. And at the same time, it turns on lights at the back as well. So it gives you plenty of visibility to other people who are in the vicinity. I've got the engine turning because I don't want to run the battery down. So that's a brief explanation as to the radios and the lights and the control surfaces on the aircraft. Here's a close-up of the wing. You can see what happens when I turn the yoke. And the other control, which I'll show you now, is the flap, and there is a... See, the flap came down to the first setting. There's the second setting. And that is full flaps. This is what you use for landing. You will use... Ten degrees of flap for taking off. What it does is it extends the surface of the wing to give you a little bit more control when departing an aircraft, uh, an airport. And then back here, you have. the rudder and the there's the rudder and there's the elevators I'll give you a tip don't make big movements on the controls 
because you can then too easily over control and the aircraft can then go out of control with you in it. Not a very good ending. Okay. Flaps up. Right. That concludes this little video on how to start the engine and control the surfaces. In the next one, we will show you about the radios, the navigation, and how that works. And then the final one will be taking the aircraft out for a little test run. You know, put it through its paces. Okay? See you then.